Soundstripe. I can't accept the loss, I'm hard headed. There's a little bit of madness to my method. Many falling off that fine line that I'm treading. I risk anything to be great, and I'm not letting nobody ride me of my victory. Number one, that's what I'm meant to be. When by any means, only thing that makes sense to me, I can make nice or make history. I got that dog in me, yeah. Turn me up. The energy got the crowd going nuts. I got that dog in your head. I take on it. Don't know, no, I got that dog in me, yeah. I'm gonna bite. No part. I could rip your squad up. That dog in me. So what's up? So what's up for the move over? Love that mediocre eye. The man is cruising around in the stroller. I got like my veins like a cutting to the wire. Show you how I'm built. A little closer. What's up, everybody? This is Robbie G on the Robbie G Show podcast. And if today is your birthday, happy birthday. And here is some celebrities that share this day with you. Uh, Jay Cinco, rapper, is 22. Uh, actress Vanessa Hutchins is 35. Uh, Laser Beam is 29. He's a YouTube star. Rapper Offset turns 32. Uh, reality star Zara McDermott is 27. Pop singer Tori Kelly turns 31. Uh, Charlie Elise, she's a TikTok star. She's 19. Uh, let's see. DK Metcalf from the Seattle Seahawks. He's 26. Alex Gasgarth, uh, rock singer, is 36 years old. Uh, and let's see. I think I got one more on here. Reality star Miriam Musso is 29 years old today. So those are some celebrities that are celebrating birthdays today uh, with you. So if it's your birthday, happy birthday. And, of course, happy birthday to all the celebrities out there in the world, too. Uh, today I'm going to talk about a few different topics, mostly all sports today. There's not a lot of TV movie news. Uh, I will have some new movies coming out uh, this week later in the show, uh, but we've got some stuff to talk about today. NCAA Bowl predictions, uh, the sh- some Chicago Bulls news, uh, where does CM Punk sign this week, and I've got the Week 15 NFL predictions, and we're going to kick it off with the state of the Chicago Bears and playoff chances. And it's crazy that we're talking about that with four games left on the season. We're still talking about the Bears having a shot at 5-8 and eight to make that seventh wild card spot. But it's true, there is a chance. Just like that Jim Carrey meme. So you're telling me there's a chance? Yes, there is. There's a chance that the Chicago Bears could still make the playoffs if they win out. And there's a few other scenarios that go with it, but... The important thing right now is that you have to win out if you're the Chicago Bears. Big news, though. I heard rumors, and this isn't official yet. They have not made this official. Jalen Johnson, they offered him a $93 million contract. And he hasn't signed it yet, but he's supposed to sign it before they go to Cleveland this weekend. So, fingers crossed, Jalen Johnson's going to be a Chicago Bear and locked in. I believe it was four years, a four-year contract. But that is crazy if we can lock him into the defense. Because obviously this offseason they would have franchise tagged him. But I think it's better to just offer him a big deal now and just be done. And have no drama going into the 2024 season. Because whether we make the playoffs or not, the chances of this team making it to a Super Bowl and winning it is very slim. I believe if we do squeak into that last wild card spot, it could be a one and done. Maybe not though. Where do things have happened? Wild card teams that have made it at nine and eight. Well, actually, it wouldn't have been nine and eight at that time because there was only seventeen games. Um, but before, we've seen wild card teams do it. 
the New York Giants with Eli Manning. And not only did he win a Super Bowl, but he beat Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. And they were not a wild card seed at the time. They were the number one seed in the AFC. So, yeah, I'm telling you now, the Bears, any team that makes the playoffs, it's a brand new start. Once you make the playoffs, your record is now 0-0. Zero and zero. The record only gets you there. Once you're there, you are now a 0-0 zero, zero record with all the teams. Doesn't matter if they're a wild card team. Doesn't matter if they're a divisional winner. Doesn't matter. You still have a shot to win. So let's look at where the standings are right now in the NFC because I took a screenshot of this and I was actually very shocked by it because with the Bears sitting at 5-8, and eight, you would think, oh, you know, they're middle of the road. They're not going to make it, you know, and everything. But right now, honestly, the NFC is wide, wide open. And that's the scary part. So let me find this uh, little picture that I got, and I'll tell you where everybody stands as of right now. I'll let you know. So as of right now, the number three seed is the Lions. The number four seed is the Buccaneers at six and seven. Now, if you win that division, and here's the sad part, at six and seven, the Buccaneers lead their division and would have a playoff home game. Um, but here's the five, six, and seven seeds. The Dallas Cowboys at nine and three. The Minnesota Vikings are six and six. And the Green Bay Packers are six and six. Right behind them are the Seahawks at six and six. The Rams at six and seven, the Falcons at six and seven, the Saints at six and seven at number eleven, and we're number twelve at five and eight, which means we are literally behind the Saints, the Falcons, the Rams, and the Seahawks for one of those last two wild card spots. But here's the fun scenario: the Bears technically are not even out of the division race right now because we split with the Lions. So, because we split with the Lions, we also split with the um, Minnesota Vikings. So, now it's going to go based on division record. So, that would probably most likely favor the Lions. So, if we ended up with the same record as the Lions, because Lions are going to lie in. And we've seen this happen before. Everybody thinks, oh, the Lions are so good. They are good on paper right now. But, they are a team that could choke. Now, do they have enough to win one more game in the next four? Most likely, they're going to win out at least one game out of the four that they're playing. But I'm not worried about the Lions because the division is most likely going to be theirs. All they need really is one more win, and they've got the division locked up. So as long as they don't just have to go on a complete Lions skid and lose every game out, which I doubt they will, I do have them predicted to, I believe, well, I'll let you know my predictions in a few minutes. But we've got a crazy, crazy weekend coming up in football, so I'll talk about that in a few minutes. But the Lions, I'm not worried about right now. What I'm worried about is the Packers and the Vikings, who are sitting at the 6th and 7th seed in the wild cards. Those are both wide open. Okay, take Dallas out of the equation. Dallas is 9-3. and three. They win one more game. They're done. They've already locked in a playoff spot then. But like I said, right now, the Rams could lose games out. The Falcons can lose some games. And if we beat the Falcons in a few weeks on New Year's Eve, then we would have the tiebreaker with them. So that's a good thing. The Saints, we won't have the tiebreaker with them. Um... Falcons we could, Seahawks we didn't play the Seahawks this year so that just goes based on the record and the conference and everything but basically all we really need is for these teams to lose two out of the four games that they play because if the Bears win out, the best way for the Bears to get a wild card spot would be to win out the four games you've got this weekend, you're playing the Browns that's a must win. This is a playoff game for Justin Fields. He has to come out. He has to be sharp. The defense has to be on point. And this is why I hope Jalen Johnson signs that contract. Because he's going to have that renewed passion like he's been having 
his whole career for the Bears. I watched a little skit with him, not a skit, but like they were talking on the sidelines, and he was excited, and he said he loves waking up knowing he's a Bear. So if you love waking up as a Bear, sign this contract. Do it. Get here. Stay here. We want you here. We're offering you a big deal. Take it. $93 million. You're a very rich man to play the sport you love on the team that you claim that you love. Stay Jalen Johnson. Be a bear and go out there and play lights out on Sunday against the Browns. Because you win that game, then you've got the Cardinals on Christmas Eve. You've got the Falcons on New Year's Eve. And then you play the Green Bay Packers. Now here's a funny scenario. If the Packers lose their second-to-last game against the Minnesota Vikings and the Bears beat the Packers in that last game, the Bears would actually have a better division record than the Packers would this year. The Packers will be 2-4. and four. The Bears will be 3-3. Three and three. So that means we get the automatic tiebreaker with the Packers. Amazing. This is a scenario that people cannot believe, but it's very doable. The Bears could win out this. The Packers could lose enough games. If you look at it right now, all these teams have six wins. If they split and win two out of four, and they just win two out of four, that would only put them at eight wins on the season. The Bears went out their nine wins. And this is why these losses last those couple of games to Denver and Detroit hurt because if the Bears would have won those games and finished those games out and won we'd be sitting at seven wins right now and we would be sitting in that number six spot where the Vikings are the Vikings and Packers would all be behind us so the Vikings would have the seventh seed and we would be the sixth seed the Packers would be on the outside looking in and that's why you got to close games out. These aren't games that they were being blown out the entire game and then started coming back and fell short. These are games that they had the lead and could have won, and we coughed it up at the end. This is why Montez Sweat deserves that big contract that he got. Because since he has been with the Bears, he has made this defense 120% better than what they were before he got here because he's rushing the quarterback quarterbacks are making mistakes look at the interceptions by Goff in those two games against the Bears even the one we lost look at how many turnovers he had look at how our offense played because our defense was holding the teams this is how a team plays the Bears have finally got it. Now, does that save Eberflus and Getze? It doesn't save Getze. But it does save Eberflus, possibly, because he did turn that defense around. So my thing, as Ryan Poles, is to sit down with Eberflus at the end of the year and tell him, as long as you're running the defense, you're going to stay for another year. We'll see how you do next year. If you start slipping, we're going to get you an even better team. Justin Fields is staying. I don't want to hear the crap about Caleb Williams. He's a crybaby. I don't like him. I don't want him here. He would definitely be a cancer in the locker room. He's already proven that by the way he's talked. I want part ownership in a team that I go to. Kid, you know that's not going to happen. That's not even allowed in football. Or any sport. Michael Jordan could not even play and be an owner. Does anybody remember that he had to give up his ownership of the Washington Wizards to go back and play to bring fans to the stadium? That's why he came back. It wasn't because he wanted to play. He had to play. He needed butts in the seats because he wanted to make money later on. So he went, he played for a year, and he went out there and he brought in a fan base, but he could not be an owner at the same time. He just couldn't be. And that's just how it goes. So no, if I am Poles, I am firing Getze, I don't care if you went out and make the playoffs. He's still got to go. Because where were you 
the beginning of the season. Why weren't you playing to Justin Fields' strengths at the beginning? All these people, Justin Fields can't read a defense. He read it pretty decent on the 4th and 13, didn't he? When they jumped and he snapped it right away. That was reading the defense. He can't throw from the pocket. That was a very good throw from the pocket to an open DJ Moore. He knew exactly where he was going and he threw it right away. Justin Fields is the guy. And next year, if you build around him... It will happen. Now, speaking of that, Marvin Harrison Jr., is he going to become eligible for the draft? He doesn't know yet. He may stay in Ohio State. He said he wants to win a national championship in his senior year with them, and he wants to beat Michigan. Probably not going to happen. If I'm Marvin Harrison Jr., I'm taking my route in the NFL now. You're not going to beat Michigan, and you're not going to win the national championship. And I know all my Ohio State fans... Aren't happy with that comment, but that's just how I feel. I'm a Michigan guy. Always have been, always will be, and I'm telling you now, Michigan isn't going to lose to Ohio State, and they are not going to win the national championship. So if I'm Marvin Harrison Jr., I'm going to the NFL, and I'm going number one to the Bears. If he is eligible for the draft, the Bears will draft him number one. Not only will he be a top three pick, he'll be a number one pick. Bears will not trade that pick unless Marvin Harrison Jr. is not there. If he does not, st- if he stays senior year and he leaves and he doesn't leave for the NFL, Bears are going to trade. And this trade came into my phone yesterday, and this is amazing. If they decided to go the route of trading that pick away because Marvin Harrison Jr. is not there. There's other good receivers, but they're not a number one receiver. Here's where I'm looking at. The Raiders get the first overall pick from the Bears. The Bears get the 2024 first round pick of the of um, the Raiders. The 2024 second round pick. So you get the pick back that you gave away to get Montez Sweat. You gave a second rounder, you're going to get back a second rounder. A 2025 first round pick, a 2025 third round pick, and Edge, Max Crosby. My friend at work said, you take that deal. And here's why. With Las Vegas, he's only been in the league since 2019. So he's young. He has 51 total sacks in his career. He had 10 in his rookie year, 7 in his second year. His third year, he had 8. Last year, he had 12 and a half. And this year, with four games still left, he has 13 and a half sacks. He had two against Minnesota on December 10th. He had uh, one against Kansas City, one against Miami, three against the Giants, one against Chicago when we played them, a half a sack against New England, one against Green Bay, two against the Chargers on October 1st, and then one against Pittsburgh. And then his first game of the season, one against Denver. 13 and a half sacks with four games left. Can you imagine Montez Sweat on one side and Max Crosby on the other? There's your defense. There's your Chicago Bears top defense. And you get Jalen Johnson back, my God, that defense would be scary. You can easily find another receiver. As much as I would love Marvin Harrison Jr. in Chicago, you could find another receiver to go on the other side of Moore. You could sign Mooney back and make him a number two, or find a number two and keep Mooney in the slot. There's millions of different scenarios. You could still upgrade your line. Your offensive line, which still needs a little bit of work and needs some tweaking, but you'll get there. This is what the Bears need to do. Either trade that away if Marvin Harrison Jr. decides not to go, but I'm sorry. If Marvin Harrison is there, you take it. Because he's a generational wide receiver. He is, He's going to be his father. And his father is a Super Bowl champion, and he is a Hall of Famer. Why would you not take him? But if not, 
this will be a great scenario too. Because now you get your second edge. Because you're going to need another edge rusher. You're going to need another guy on the other side of sweat. He's not going to be able to do it himself. Khalil Mack did not do it himself in Chicago. He had... Who did he have on the other side of him? You know, like, you had to have that. You had to have that second person. He had Robert Quinn. Quinn on the other side would go after it together. That was scary. Because you can't double up both guys every time. So one was going to get to the quarterback and rush the quarterback. Whether it was a hurry up, whether it was a sack, it was always done. So there you go. That's what my state of the Bears is. Bears still have a shot. If I'm the Bears, I'm definitely not tanking. I have no reason to tank. I'm going to get the number one pick. Carolina may win one more game this year, and I'm hoping and praying it's against the Packers. An upset. A big upset against the Packers on Christmas Eve. If Santa's going to bring me one thing for Christmas this year, make it a Packers loss to the Carolina Panthers. Because if the Packers lose three out of four, or lose three out of four, Bears are going to be ahead of them. Because the Bears are winning at least three out of four. At least, at minimum, they're winning three out of four. They're beating the Packers. The only game I'm a little worried about is this weekend. But other than that, I'm fine. I think Justin Fields is going to have a great season. But let's move on to the Week 15 predictions. Last week, I went 8-7. and seven. Not the greatest week again, but I'm still 123-84 and 84 for the year. 68.2%. I'll take it. So here's my Week 15 predictions. Starting tonight, Thursday Night Football. Chargers versus the Raiders. Raiders got this. Chargers are without Justin Herbert now. Justin Herbert is hurt. He's out for the season. Not a mobile quarterback, and he's out. But everybody's worried about Justin Fields getting hurt. Justin Fields went out with a right-hand injury. He was out for four weeks. Justin Herbert's going to miss the rest of the season, including the playoffs if they would make it. So there you go. So it's going to be Raiders in that one. Saturday, we have football. Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday this week. That's crazy. So here we go. Saturday games. The Vikings and the Bengals. I got the Bengals. Bengals are going to win it. This could be a big week for the Bears if they can beat the Browns. And you'll see why by the end of this. Steelers and Colts. I got the Colts in that one. Sorry, Trubisky. You're not going to get many wins. Uh, and then the last game on Saturday night, Saturday night football, Broncos and Lions. Broncos are upsetting the Lions. So, like I said, you already got two divisional losses on Saturday. Vikings lose to the Bengals, and the Lions are going to lose to the Broncos. Sunday football at noon, Bears and Browns. The Bears. Bears are going to win that game. Bears defense is going to be all over Joe Flacco. Flacco is going to get sacked. Montez Sweat's going to get at least two sacks in that game. That's my prediction. Justin Fields is going to throw a couple touchdowns. He's going to throw for over 250 yards. I would say possibly over 300 in that game. He's going to eat the defense alive. Even though they do have a good defense, I think he steps up his game in this one because he knows this is it. He knows the scenarios. He knows they need to win. And if the Vikings lose and if the Lions lose on Saturday, like I said that they would, Bears know they need that win. Falcons and Panthers. Falcons are going to beat the Panthers. Uh, Bucks and the Packers. Tampa Bay Buccaneers with a big upset over the Packers. Would that really be an upset, though? Their records are pretty similar. So I don't think that's an upset. That might be an upset when Aaron Rodgers played, but not with Jordan Love. Uh, let's see. Texans and Titans. I've got the Texans in that one. I went for the Titans too many times and got screwed over, so I'm definitely going for um, the Texans in that one. Jets and Dolphins. I got the Dolphins winning that one. Dolphins know they had a bad game Monday night against the Titans, and they need that win, so they're going to win. Uh, Giants and Saints. I've got the Giants in that one. Uh, I just think it's going to be an upset over the Saints, and it really helps us, you know. I mean, even though the Giants will move into the same spot we'll be in, 
it's still going to be good for the Bears. Bears need the Saints to lose at least two out of the next four, um, especially if we win out. And then the last 12 o'clock game, Chiefs and Pats. I got the Chiefs in that one. Mahomes the crybaby. Don't get me started on that. That was terrible. You could see he was so offsides. Even Stevie Wonder and Ray Charles saw that he was offsides. That was just pathetic. Sorry, Mahomes, but you got to stop crying. Uh, let's see. 3 p.m. games. Commanders and the Rams. I got Washington in that one. Uh, 49ers and the Cardinals. 49ers, that's an easy one. Uh, Cowboys versus the Bills. I got dumb boys. The Cowboys are going to beat the Bills in that one. Um, then Sunday Night Football. Ravens versus the Jags. I've got the Ravens beating the Jags in that one. Um, Lamar Jackson, prime time. He's going to have a good game. And then Monday Night Football. Eagles and Seahawks. I got the Eagles with the W on Monday Night Football. So we'll see how I do this week. Um, it's lots of games. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, hopefully better than 8-7. and seven. I believe there's 16 games this week. So the worst I could do is 8-8. Eight and eight. If I, you know, split it, but hopefully not, and we'll see what happens. We're going to go on to NCAA Bowl Predictions. That's right. We've got the predictions for all the bowl games. I did it on ESPN, so let's see how I do. All right, so let's go over some bowl predictions. I'm going to run through the entire list of bowls and just do it now. And then every week after games, I'll let everybody know how my picks did for the ones. But I'm not going to do it um, because there's so many bowls and they're starting this Saturday. So let's go into what I predicted for all the bowl games. So I did my predictions through ESPN Fantasy uh, where I do my fantasy football stuff. And so let's see how we're going to do. Ohio State, uh, Ohio Bobcats, not Ohio State, Ohio Bobcats and Georgia Southern Eagles. I've got the Ohio Bobcats with the win there. That's the Saturday. Uh, another game Saturday, Florida A&M Rattlers. I've got over the Howard Bison, and that's the Cricket Celebration Bowl. Uh, in the r &L Carriers New Orleans Bowl on Saturday, it's Louisiana Ragin' Cajuns versus the Jacksonville State Gamecocks. I've got Jacksonville State in that one. Um, the Avocados from Mexico Cure Bowl. It's Appalachian State Mountaineers versus the Miami, Ohio Redhawks. I've got the Miami, Ohio Redhawks winning that one. Uh, Saturday afternoon, the Fresno State Bulldogs are playing New Mexico State Aggies in the Esleta New Mexico Bowl. I've got New Mexico State winning that one. Uh, another bowl game Saturday, Boise State Broncos versus the UCLA Bruins. I've got Boise State winning that one on Saturday night. Uh, also Saturday night, we've got Texas Tech Red Raiders versus the California Golden Bears. I've got California winning that one. Uh, let's see, Monday, 12-18, I've got the famous Toastery Bowl. And that's Old Dominion Monarchs versus the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. i got Western Kentucky winning that one. Uh, Scooter's Coffee Fresco Bowl on Tuesday, 12-19. Uh, Marshall Thundering Herd versus UTSA Roadrunners. I've got the Roadrunners. Don't know why I picked the Roadrunners. Probably because of the name. That's a pretty cool name. Uh, let's see. Thursday, 12-21. We got the Syracuse Orange versus South Florida Bulls. My friend Antoinette would love the fact that I picked Syracuse in that one. Uh, they are going to beat the South Florida Bulls in the RoofClaim.com Boca Raton Bowl. Uh, next Friday, the, UFC, the UCF Knights versus the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets in the Union Home Mortgage Gasparilla Bowl. I've got Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets winning that one. Saturday, 1223 on Christmas Eve, we've got Northern Illinois Huskies taking on the Arkansas State Red Wolves. I've got the Northern Illinois Huskies winning that one. Uh, let's see. Also next Saturday on 1223, we've got the Duke Blue Devils taking on the Troy Trojans in the 76 Birmingham Bowl. I got to take Duke. Let's go Blue Devils in that one. They're going to win that game. Uh, let's see. Next Saturday, Air Force Falcons taking on James Madison Dukes. 
and the Lockheed Martin Armed Forces Bowl. And I've got the James Madison Dukes in that one. Uh, let's see. The famous Idaho Potato Bowl is also next Saturday, and that's Utah State Aggies versus the Georgia State Panthers. I got Georgia State winning that one. Uh, next Saturday, also, we've got the 68 Ventures Bowl, and that's Eastern Michigan Eagles taking on the South Alabama Jaguars. It's funny. Two Michigans and two Alabamas taking each other on. You got the Eastern Michigan Eagles and the South Alabama Jaguars. I got, in that one, I got the South Bama Jaguars in that one. Uh, let's see, a little close to home right here, the SRS Distribution Las Vegas Bowl. Amazing place to have to play, especially if you're a 21-year-old player. That's going to be awesome. Northwestern Wildcats will be facing off against the Utah Utes. It's going to be the Northwestern Wildcats in that one next Saturday night. Um, then also next Saturday, the Easy Post Hawaii Bowl. And that's going to be San Jose State Spartans versus the Coastal Carolina Chant Chanticleers. I don't even know how to say that one. I've got San Jose State Spartans winning that one. Uh, Tuesday, the uh, 1226, it's going to be... The Minnesota Golden Gophers versus Bowling Green Falcons. I got the Bowling Green Falcons in that one. Uh, let's see. Surf Pro First Responders Bowl is 1226. I've got the Rice Owls versus Texas State Bobcats. I got Texas State winning that one. Uh, also Tuesday, 1226, we got the Kansas Jayhawks taking on UNLV Rebels in the Guaranteed Rate Bowl. I've got Kansas Jayhawks in that one. Uh, the Military Bowl, presented by GoBowling.com, uh, is Wednesday, 12-27, and that's the Tulane Green Wave versus Virginia Tech Hokies. I've got Tulane winning that one. Uh, Wednesday, 12-27, we got the North Carolina Tar Heels taking on West Virginia Mountaineers and the Dukes Mayo Bowl. I've got North Carolina Tar Heels winning that one. Uh, direct Holiday Bowl, the USC Trojans on 12-27. Take it on the number 15 Louisville Cardinals. I got Louisville over the Trojans. Sorry, Caleb Williams, your season's going to end in a loss in a bowl. He's just not that good. He's not He's not what he's hyped up to be. And I don't think he's, if he's that soft in NCAA, he's going to be even softer in the NFL. So good luck to whatever team takes him first. Because he will go in the top five. He'll probably go in the top three. I mean, let's face it. The Bears aren't taking him. Number two will most likely take him. So we'll see what happens. But, yeah, so USC, Tro uh, USC Trojans are going to lose to the Louisville Cardinals. Uh, the Tax Act Texas Bowl, uh, we've got, and that's 12-27. we got the Oklahoma State Cowboys on the Texas A&M Aggies. i got Texas A&M in that one, even though Oklahoma State Cowboys were ranked number 20. Uh, let's see, the Websey Fenway Bowl, and that is Thursday, 12-28. We got Boston College Eagles to get on SMU Mustangs. I got the Mustangs with that one. Uh, let's see, Miami Hurricanes playing Rutgers in the Bad Boy Mowers Pinstripe Bowl. I got Miami Hurricanes. Shout out to Dwayne The Rock Johnson for that one. Uh, let's see, Pop-Tart Bowls. Uh, I got the... Number 25, Kansas State Wildcats taking on the number 18, North Carolina State Wolfpack. I've got the North Carolina State Wolfpack in that one. Uh, the Valero Alamo Bowl. Number 12, Oklahoma Sooners taking on the number 14, Arizona Wildcats on Thursday, 12-28. I've got the Oklahoma Sooners. Big shout out to Jim Ross from the WWE and now AEW. He's a big Oklahoma guy. Uh, let's see. Tax Slayer Gator Bowl. On Friday, 12-29, we got the Kentucky Wildcats taking on number 22, Clemson Tigers. I got Clemson with that win. Uh, Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl. I love the name of some of these bowls. Uh, you got number 16, Notre Dame Fighting Irish taking on number 19, Oregon State Beavers. I've got North, uh, Notre Dame winning that one. Fighting Irish is taking the Tony the Tiger Bowl. Uh, the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. Iowa State Cyclones taking on the Memphis Tigers. I got an upset in that one. Only 36% of people have picked that one so far. And it's oh, I got Iowa State winning that one. Uh, let's see. The Goodyear Cotton Bowl. Number 7, Ohio State Buckeyes taking on the Missouri Tigers. This is Friday, 1229. 
Ohio State. They're going to take that one. <clears throat> big shout out to my buddy at work. Uh, big Ohio State fan. Uh, and so hopefully for him, Constellation Prize, they can win the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. Uh, let's see, the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. That's Saturday, 1230. We've got the number 10 Penn, uh, Penn State Nittany Lions taking out the number 11 Ole Miss Rebels. I've got Penn State Lions taking that one. Uh, Trans Perfect Music City Bowl. Maryland Tarpons taking on the Auburn Tigers. I'll take Maryland in that one. Uh, Capital One Orange Bowl on 1230. We've got the number five Florida State Seminoles taking on the number six Georgia Bulldogs. Big shout out to my boy Johnny. I got the Georgia Bulldogs winning that one. Um, let's see. 1230 Saturday. Uh, the Wyoming Cowboys taking on Toledo Rockets. I got the Toledo Rockets at the Barstool Sports Arizona Bowl taking that one. Uh, Monday, January 1st, bunch of games that day. We got the LSU Tigers at number 13 taking on the unranked Wisconsin Badgers. I got the Wisconsin Badgers winning that one. Uh, let's see, the Vibro Fiesta Bowl. You got the number 8 Oregon Ducks taking on the number 23 Liberty Flames. Who are 13 and 0? I got the upset. The Oregon Ducks. Well, technically, it wouldn't be an upset because they were number eight at 11 and 2. So I will take the Oregon Ducks in that one. The Cheez It Citrus Bowl. Uh, the number 20, uh, 21 Tennessee Volunteers taking on the number 17 Iowa Hawkeyes. I got the Tennessee Volunteers in that one. And then the two big ones. Four o'clock start. The CFB. Semi-final at the Rose Bowl. Number one Michigan Wolverines taking on the Alabama Crimson Tide at number four. I got the Michigan Wolverines. My team, baby. Go blue. They're going to take out Alabama. We're going to roll tight all over them. It's going to be a good one. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. Washington, number, Washington uh, number two Washington Huskies. In the other college football semifinal at the All-State Sugar Bowl, taking on number three, Texas Longhorns, it's going to be the Texas Longhorns in that one. So it's going to be Michigan and Texas in the national championship game. I got Michigan taking that one. So we'll see how it goes. I'll let everybody know weekly what I did, you know, on those bowls. Because it looks like I've got, this week I've got Saturday. i got a bunch Saturday. I've got, I got Monday. There's games Monday and then a game on Tuesday. The th one's Thursday we won't know until after the show. So I'll have a few games to report on from Saturday, Monday, and Tuesday and that. So we're going to have some fun with it. Let's see what we do there. Uh, Chicago Bulls news. The only news I really got for the Chicago Bulls right now is they have been playing a lot better without Zach Levine in there. They have lost the last two to Milwaukee and Denver, but they did win four in a row before that. So they're four and two in the game since he's been out. Honestly, I think it's time to trade Zach Levine. Don't know who they're going to trade for, but right now I take a lot. I take pretty much almost anything that's comparable to a Zach Levine because we need somebody in there who's not going to take four shots when he feels like he needs to all the time. So we'll see what happens there. Um, and then I've got, where did CM Punk sign? So here's the last part of the sports today. CM Punk is officially, officially on the Raw roster. That is awesome. I knew it was going to happen. I figured he would go there. And I'm not mad about it at all. I'm excited. And the fact that Seth Rollins came out right afterwards and cut that amazing promo. If you haven't seen the promo between CM Punk and Seth Rollins, go watch it. It was amazing. CM Punk in the Royal Rumble with Cody Rhodes of the Royal Rumble. The two of them, it's going to come down to the two of them in the final two slots. Whether Cody Rhodes comes out at number one or not, there's been rumors that he's going to come out at number one. I think Punk comes somewhere around 27, 28. It's going to be Cody Rhodes and Punk at the end. And we're going to see one of them win the Royal Rumble and one of them is going to win Elimination Chamber. Most likely, Roman Reigns will be in the main event, main event of WrestleMania, which is night two, um, to close out the entire weekend. So my guess is Cody Rhodes 
will win the Royal Rumble and challenge Roman. And then CM Punk will win Elimination Chamber in Canada. What a way to do it. The first Canadian Elimination Chamber ever. And CM Punk, who made a bigger turn after 10 years, that would be an amazing story. And then he challenges Seth Rollins at Mania. Your two main events are pretty much, I think, sewn up. Everybody says, well, what if Drew McIntyre wins at this day one Raw that they're going to do? It's not, I don't think it'll happen. I'd be shocked if we see that. So, yeah, I'm excited for where they're going to be going on Monday Night Raw with this. Um, I think that we're going to have some great promos. And I think because we all know that Seth Rollins really is not a big fan of CM Punk, it makes those promos even better. It makes them feel way more realistic. So we'll see what happens with that. But, uh, yeah, so let's go into one last thing that I want to talk about. New movies coming out this weekend. Uh, the one big movie that's being released this weekend is Wonka. And that is the origin story of Willy Wonka and how he became Wonka. So uh, that's exciting. That's going to be cool. Uh, go check that out in the theaters. Uh, that's the big one for the weekend. Honestly, I don't really see a lot of any big ones out besides that. Trolls is still out there. So if you haven't seen the Trolls um the new Trolls movie, go see that. I haven't seen it yet, never got a chance to. Oh, I did watch Saw 10. It was amazing, I loved it. But one movie I loved more than that that I watched last Saturday with my wife was amazing. See the new, if you haven't seen it yet, see the new Exorcist be, uh, movie. The new Exorcist is amazing. The people returning from the original, it, it was It was amazing. So definitely go see, um, not, not go see, but watch it. It's on Peacock right now, streaming on there. So if you have a Peacock account, you can definitely do that. You can watch it. If not, you can get the Peacock. I think it's. I think they're doing a thing on it right now for like $1.99 a month for like six months or something. So they're doing a promo with it. They do a lot of promos to get people to sign up for it. And on there you could watch movies, you could watch NBC shows, and you could also watch WWE. If you're a big WWE fan, they have a ton of stuff. That's where the WWE Network is on Peacock now. So go check all that out. You get a lot of good stuff for $1.99 a month. It's worth it. So make sure you check that out. I'm going to take off next week. We'll have some more fun topics. We'll talk about celebrity birthdays. Uh, Christmas is around the corner. I'm going to talk about the top uh, gifts for the year. I'm um, hopefully we'll see that. And uh, yeah, the week after that we'll have the year end review. We'll talk about um, celebrities that died during uh, 2023. So we got a lot, a good last couple of weeks coming up on the show. Uh, sports news, obviously. Uh, this week there wasn't a lot of entertainment news. You know that's okay. Um, it happens, but yeah, next week we'll have some entertainment news. I'll talk about. Um, what's the top 10 toys of the year in case you're doing last minute shopping over the weekend for Christmas next week. But yeah, everybody enjoy this weekend. It's nice out of Chicagoland area. Get out today. It's, it's nice now. By the time this show airs at six o'clock, it'll be nighttime, but make sure you get out. Let's look at the weather really quick in the Chicagoland area. Let's see if it's going to be nice this weekend or not. Obviously the weather can be a little crazy and you may not be listening to the chicagoland area you might be listening in another state so check out your local uh weather but let's see really quick what the weather is going to look like today 50 degrees definitely feels like it uh friday 53 saturday p.m showers but 45 and sunday 46 so if you're going to get out there and do some christmas shopping with a week left before christmas make sure you do it this weekend because it's supposed to be nice out uh until then i'll see everybody next week Stay safe, stay healthy, and make sure you come back next week because you're not dead. Don't die. I'll see everybody next week, and have a good one. Peace.